and welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is cost inflation. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to keep up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving personalization options and exclusive colors on the website or you can blank one on Amazon Prime. Also, be sure to use the Discord link at the top of our description to join our Discord server. We've got a bunch of new ideas that we've talked about in the Discord server. They've got actually the first sneak peek at a product that's going to be coming down the line probably in a few months. And uh, it's been great to hear some feedback from that. And in fact, some of the uh, suggestions that have been made in that particular Discord are actually going to probably end up becoming products in the near future just because people have been asking about it. So if you want to contribute to the company, you want to contribute to the uh, community, and you want to be involved in potentially deciding what comes out next, definitely go join our Discord server. It's in the description of the top. It's in the link in the top of the description below. <clears throat> so today we are talking about cost inflation. It feels like because of the inflation report that came out around um, J- June, right? It was a discussion about June. It seems like everybody's about talking about inflation. And it's an interesting discussion to ha- be had, of course, and obviously nobody really wants to hear about inflation because it's one of those things where you're like, ugh, how bad could it get? And the answer is, well, it can get a lot worse, and it's going to get a lot worse, and here's why. We have seen in the last 12 months our costs go up continuously. Every time we've ordered leather, every single time, it's gone up. And it's gone up in a, in a track, it's trending in a way that is rising faster. So. The price increases originally started off small. <clears throat> there are a few percentage points, but now every time we order leather, it's much, much, much more. On top of that, our hardware is getting more expensive, and everything is getting more expensive. We've seen in- cost inflation on, our in- on the inserts that we put inside of them, the bars that we have them made with them. So across the board, we're seeing a cost increase, and <clears throat> we have been mostly just eating those costs up until this point. And we really have had a tough time doing it. And it's part of what I think has created our liquidity problem. Because from a cash flow perspective, if we had a lot of money in the bank right now, it would be okay if we had a couple of bad months in a row, which, you know, is kind of the case when you've got rising costs and you don't rise your, raise your prices. I mean, the last time we did a price increase really was G- uh, February when we launched the Rugged Line. <clears throat> and the Rugged Line launch was specifically designed to mask the price increase or to mitigate, I should say, the price increase, right? We said, okay, if you want the same thing you were getting two months ago, it's going to be $10 more. It's going to be called Premier. And if you want something else, something a little bit easier to, you know, a little more accessible, it'll be a little lower cost, which will be the same price you were paying before, right? We have been trying desperately to try to maintain those those prices. I think that personally, it it is difficult for me to say, I want to, yeah, we want to raise prices, right? I wish we could. I'm a little worried, though, because a lot of our, every time we've raised prices in the past, it has been bad for us. It is, we've seen a a significant decline in sales for about a month, and then normally they rebound. But the problem is that during that time, during that month, we need to have enough cash on hand to be able to survive. And the problem is that without the liquidity of the line of credit extension and without some of the other access to cash and capital, we're in a situation where we can't do a price increase because we can't deal with the hit that will come in sales by doing that price increase. And on the flip side, we can't not do a price increase because staying at the current price is, is we're not, we can't survive at that rate. So we've been trying to do some, some creative things to help kind of mitigate that problem. One of the big things that we just launched was a cost cutting initiative on our binders. They're some of our best selling products. And this was actually an initiative that was spurred on in part by my mother. Thank you. And was there was other people involved who kind of had similar thoughts to her thought, but she kind of expressed it the best, which was that we send all of these hardware, all of the different hardware packs for all of the binders, but a lot of people don't use all of the hardware packs. In fact, I think most people don't use them. And I'd be willing to bet that most people put them in a drawer and then they forget about them and they don't know where they are. And if you, they had to go find them later, they wouldn't know where they were. So all in all, there are people I know who do use the bolt packs. And so we needed to kind of figure out a way to, uh, to do both because the bolts are expensive. And if you think about what we're sending, right? If we're sending you a binder with a male and female, male and female, male and female, so three, three sets of male and female in a binder, 
We're also sending you an additional four sets of that hardware, four of those same hardware. And if you never use those four hardware, that's an enormous amount of cost because they're expensive. We have those custom made. They're expensive for us. So the idea that we're planning on going, we've, we have in, implemented, if you go on, on the website right now and try to buy a binder, this is what you'll see. You will select your type of leather, you'll select your color, and then you'll select what bolt sizes you want. And if you want all bolt sizes, it'll be $10 more. So as a kind of compar comparative thing, you're, you are starting to see the prices rise on our products. Like for example, if, if you wanted to buy today exactly the same thing you bought the same time last year, you'd buy a Premier with all bolt sets. That'd be $20 more than what it was last year. Now, like I said, because we need to be able to mitigate the fallout from the, a price increase like that, we've been trying to cut costs instead. And I think this is an option that's a good, good option for us. I think it's also a good option for the customers because I think it serves the customers. They've been being charged functionally extra money because of these hardware kits that they may never use. So I think this is the better option. And like I said, it, it's become an opportunity for us to say what really is the best way to serve the customers and for personally, I say we shouldn't raise prices for as long as we can. And we're going to figure it out because we do need to raise prices eventually across the board. And I don't know exactly when that's going to come into effect, but it's got to happen before Christmas. Because if we go through Christmas with prices the way we've got them and the cost of goods sold the way we have them, I mean, I don't think prices are coming down on our raw materials. I don't think it's ever going to happen. I think we are permanently at a new normal for our cost. And it's, I think it's going to keep going up. Now, the Fed keeps talking about how they're going to raise interest rates again. And, you know, that'll, That'll hurt companies like mine, especially because we pay on our line of credit, we pay a floating interest rate based off of prime. Now, up until this point, it's been 4%, 4.6%. So it's, I think it's 0.9 above prime or something like that. There's a, the bank gets their VIG and then it, it rises on that. So as these inflation prices or as the Fed tries to fight inflation by raising the interest rates, companies like mine are the ones that are going to get squeezed because of the debt we're carrying on our line of credit, which is a variable credit or variable interest rate credit. So this is an issue I think that will be a, a problem across the board for us going forward as it is for everybody. And we are seeing gas prices go down a little bit. I'm hoping, I doubt this, but I'm hoping that that means that we'll see shipping costs go down a little bit because we've seen enormous jump in shipping costs. Um, and I, I mean, that's, I understand it, right? If, you, if, it, if gas goes from being, what was it, in, in 2020, in, in, I saw a post in January of 2020, gas, the average of gas was 197 per gallon across the country. If you go from 197, even the cheaper gas right now at, in, in where we live is 439. And I know that it's a lot higher in other places on top of that, right? The cheapest gas I've seen in a long time was 385, right? So that's twice, that's two times the cost per gallon. And if you're shipping, that's a huge part of your cost is the, cal is the cost of, of, of gas. So maybe we'll see a cost of gas decrease in cost and, and that will help offset some of the shipping costs. But I don't know if that's going to happen either. I don't think the shipping companies have a lot of incentive at this point to reduce their costs. I think that they've kind of got everyone used to the new normal. And if gas prices go down, I don't think they're going to stay down. And I think the, the, the companies know that. So I think they're going to look at this opportunity as an opportunity. If you're a UPS to say, let's make as much money during this profitable time as we can. And then when gas prices go back up, you know, we'll be a little bit better off to deal with that. So I think that that's part of this as well. Realistically speaking, I don't think that this new problem, this new transition will be a problem for most people. It was a problem for us to implement because Shopify only lets us have 100 variants, which wouldn't necessarily be a problem because we changed the way that we did the paper. But it only lets us have three options. So you can go color, leather type, and one other thing. Now, there's a lot of issues with Shopify and the way that the variants, the product variance limitations have created an issue. And I think the main problem is that Shopify has no incentive to improve that process. Their third-party application software is extensive. They've got a huge number of, mo of third-party providers that can remove those variant limits. However, the problem is that we use the customizer. So now you've got two third-party apps, one to manage the variants and one to customize the product, and they don't talk to each other. So realistically speaking, with Shopify saying we're not going to necessarily change the number of variants or the product options because you can get a third-party app to do that, that's not really a good solution because if you've got multiple elements of 
mobile application, if you've got multiple plugins in your site that provide functionality, they may not speak to each other. In this case, they didn't. So if you go to our website right now, you buy a wide cut binder. You'll select your posts. There won't be a paper option. You'll select your posts in the drop down. And then when you click add to cart, a pop up will show up and say, Would you like to add paper? And then it'll prompt you for that. And if you add that paper, by the way, that paper is the same price as it was before. And that's where the slash pricing comes in. So you'll see that. And you can add paper to your cart and then you can check out. If you go to Wycut Binder and you add a custom engraving, so you open up the customizer, you'll do the same thing. You'll pick your color, your leather type, your post. You'll open up the customizer, you'll customize the product, and then when you go click add to cart, then before you, uh, sorry, no, at that point, the item will be in your cart, the custom item will be in your cart, you can check out. After you check out, there will be a post-purchase opportunity where you'll be able to buy it and fill it with paper. It is not the ideal version of this. I did not like this idea. I did not want to do it this way, but we don't really have any alternative option. And as much as I don't like the way that this display is working, it's not the, the, I, I kind of have to get over my dislike for the way that this is being executed because the results of the execution are too important to not do. So all in all, these are some changes that we're making to deal with the cost of inflation. Like I said, we can't really raise our prices without seeing a huge decline in our sales temporarily. We don't have the cash position to support that. And on the flip side, we can't keep our prices the same. Otherwise, we're going to go out of business. You know, it's like being stabbed or strangled, which is your choice. You know, if you, if you raise prices, you're going to get stabbed and you're going to bleed out quickly. And if you don't raise your prices, you'll just get strangled slowly. So, you know, I, I'm, for now, we're going to try to cut costs and, and see if we can get enough cash in the bank to survive, you know, the stabbing, um, which is going to have to come. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, moral of the story is if you're one of those people out there that have been sitting there thinking to myself, I'm going to wait till the Murdys are better on sale or I'm going to wait till the Murdys are better priced. <laughs> it's not really likely going to happen because we can't really support that. I would like us to have that. And yes, will we run a Black Friday, Cyber Monday discount? Probably. But that's a long way off. And the discount at that point probably will only bring the price down to where it's at right now at best. So... Just keep that in mind. If you've been waiting to buy, now is the best time to buy. It will not get better than this. I promise you that. Um, and it's been a challenge to try to mitigate this, these rising costs. Never have I, never have I ever dealt with this kind of, of rising inflation, right? When the previous four years of our existence, the first four, three or four years, we saw one price increase of 3%. On one of our things, our leather, we saw a 3% price increase on our leather. That was it once in those four years like i said it's gone up almost it's over 20 percent now in the last month in the last year it's gone up over 20 percent in the last year so just keep that in mind all right folks thank you guys for tuning in today be sure to check back in on thursday for our next topic don't forget to check that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get notified of our latest podcast if you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, journal, folio, accessory, or anything else we sell, please feel free to contact us on the main page of our website at murdycreative.co or you can contact us via email um, and text message. You can also contact us in our Discord server. The Discord link is at the top of the description. You go join our Discord server. You can just ask questions there. Um, we do appreciate your patience as we work through the messages, though. If you have a quick question or you want to place an order over the phone, please do feel free to give us a call at 414-434-9001. You can call us or text us at that number Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. That's 414-434-9001. If you, get, if you don't get a hold of us during business hours or after hours, please do, do feel, please do feel free to leave us a voicemail. If you're calling about a specific order, please include the order number in the voicemail. The order number should start with S and then be followed by a series of digits, and that'll help us identify who we're talking to and what we're talking about. If you think we deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow our new community. Both a review on the podcast, whatever app you're listening on, as well as a review on the product itself. If you want to go to murdycreative.co slash reviews, you can read all of our amazing reviews. There's a button on the page that says leave us a good review. If you click on that, it's going to take you to Google now, no longer Facebook, to Google, and you can leave your review there. <clears throat> we do love all of the reviews. We read them out loud. They're the best part of our day. If for whatever reason you leave us a bad review, there's another button that says get directly in contact with us. It is deeply important to me personally that everyone has a good experience with the company and with the product. So before you leave us a bad review, please, please, please give us an opportunity to make things right. We will do whatever we can, including recrafting, refunding. Just please, please give us an opportunity. Thank you so much for that. 
Word of mouth is the best form of advertising, so please tell your friends. If you want to get a little something for doing that, be sure to go to the little person icon at the top of our website. You log in. Once you log in, you can go to the bottom left-hand corner of the main page, and there's the rewards tab. When you open up that rewards tab, a little pane will open up. There'll be all of the points you've earned. You get 10% back on anything you purchase in store as in-store credit that you can spend on your next purchase. And there's a shareable link there. If you share that link with your family and friends, they get $10 off their first purchase and you get $10 of in-store credit when they make that purchase. So it's a great way to help the company and share us. If you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about, send them my way. Be sure to send us an email about them or you can reach out to me in the Discord server and you can tell me exactly what you want to hear and I'll be happy to talk about it. If you're looking for multiple binders, journals, folios, anything else we sell, uh, for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason we do have bulk discounts built directly into the cart. All you need to do is add everything you want to your cart, mix and match to your heart's desire. It's purely based off the total cart quantity. Once you've finished adding all those items to your cart, you can hit checkout and it'll automatically apply the appropriate discount for that specific quantity. Feel free to reach out to us by email if you have a little questions about that, you want to know more about the specific discount tiers, we'd be happy to talk you through it. If you're looking for custom engraved items, we have no minimum order quantities and no setup fees. It's a simple flat fee, usually $15 per item, and that is pre-bulk discount. So if you want to get a whole bunch of items, that $15 actually can go down a little bit. So it's a great opportunity to get, you can get just one, right? If you've got a significant other who owns a business and you want to get them one binder with their logo on it, we can, we'd be happy to help with that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day and goodbye.